The federal government has just yesterday announced new funding for cannabis research projects right across the country. This money will fund research into potential medical uses for cannabis. Joining us this morning is Keith Sharkey. He's a professor at the University of Calgary. Good morning to you. Good morning. We know, Professor, there's a lot of anecdotal information about the medicinal uses of cannabis, but of course there hasn't been a lot of research done because up until recently it was illegal. Now researchers are looking at a number of areas, including pain management, infl inflammation, migraines, epilepsy. What are the projects that the University of Calgary is focusing on? Yeah, we're focusing on a few uh, from this uh, federal government uh, announcement. Uh, one is in migraines. Another one is in health promotion and actually messaging uh, the, the safe use of cannabis uh, amongst our youth and adolescents. And uh, the third one is in, um, uh, is in uh, a condition called uh, cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. It, it's a vomiting syndrome that occurs in overconsumption of cannabis. And we have a group here studying that because we really don't understand why that happens. Uh, what about for mental health? There's a lot of controversy around cannabis uh, being used to treat those suffering with mental health uh, issues. What research is being done in this area? Yeah, there's quite a lot going on right across Canada. In, uh, in Calgary, there's a, a lot of interest in stress disorders, and in particular, a post-traumatic stress disorder. We have a group uh, studying that, but there's also quite a lot of research around the country on mental health because uh, cannabis can, uh, can you know, overconsumption can induce mental health concerns or, or conditions. Um, but certainly uh, cannabis has also been touted as being able to treat certain conditions. So it's, it's one of those paradoxical issues. Uh, a little may be okay, a lot may be too much, and may uh, give rise to problems. So uh, those, are the, uh, those are the things that people are studying right now, both of those sides of the, uh, the two sides of, the, of that coin. So cannabis has not even been uh, legal for a year. This research, obviously, in the very early stages. It's, research studies yep. can take decades. How long until we see results from some of these studies? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the sort of three to five year window is something that we can expect um, from the research that's currently going on that I'm aware of, certainly in Calgary and also in Canada. Um, it may take longer before we really understand the full range of actions, but, but certainly uh, we can expect to see progress in, in the relative near term, I'd say. Uh, you mentioned some of the risks that can be associated with cannabis. How are researchers weighing those risks versus the benefit? Yeah, that's a great, uh, a great question as well. Um, you know, uh, when they do clinical trials of cannabis, they're very, very careful to study the, the side effects or the adverse effects. And so anyone who's, who's undergoing treatment with that for medical purposes is, is thoroughly studied. And that really allows researchers to, to balance any potential harms that may be occurring with any potential benefits. And that's how clinical research is done in Canada and around the world for that matter. So um, they're looking for things that may be expected to occur, um, that we know the, the potential side effects, but they're also looking for things that are unexpected. So they'll be studying a range of effects uh, in order to keep both patients safe and to understand the full range of uh, as I say, harms and benefits of cannabis. Professor Sharkey, I want to pick up on one thing that you mentioned, and that was one of the projects that University of Calgary is looking at is on messaging uh, to youth. Isn't just the fact that it's yeah. illegal for certain ages kind of all the messaging you need? Um, no, no, it's much, uh, well, I mean, I, I wish that were the case, but it, it's, it's much more subtle than that and much more uh, complex than that. Uh, as we know, uh, youth and adolescents actually are major consumers of cannabis in this country and, and around the world. They're doing so illegally, as, as you rightly point out. Uh, but also young people who are taking it legally, so people over the, 18, uh, over the age of 18. And uh, under, understanding that cannabis may be more harmful uh, in the developing brain, and the brain develops right through until you're about mid-20s, uh, the researchers at the University of Calgary are trying to develop messages so that uh, our young people uh, don't choose to indulge uh, uh, too early in life. And certainly if they do choose to do it, as I say, illegally, um, 
they do so uh, with a full knowledge of the range of potential harms that may occur. And the messages that they're developing at the University of Calgary are being done uh, together with the youth themselves. So this is trying to be working in partnership with, with our young people so that they really do feel part of the solution to the problems that are created uh, when young people consume drugs, whether those be cannabis, uh, alcohol, or cigarettes. Professor Sharkey, thanks for joining us from Calgary this morning. You're very welcome. Thank you for having me on.